right, so properties of logarithms. Really, this is all based on exponents, and we've been doing we've been doing um, you know all those exponents and all of our our, our uh, things that we do with exponents. And when we multiply, we add the exponents. When we divide, we subtract them. All of that, etc. That we've been doing for our whole whole chapter. So now we're applying that to logarithms. So our first property of logarithms is oops, number one. If you have the log with any base, so we call that B, and this is number one here, so you don't need to write this down because you've got it at number one, of M times N, we can separate these by addition. And that makes sense because remember when we multiplied, when I had like A cubed times A squared, what did I do with my exponents? You added them, so it makes sense that we can separate these kind of going backwards. Because remember, a logarithm isn't just an exponent. So that means that we're just going to add them together like that. All right. Um, <clears throat> another, the next one then, is for division. And Ryan, listening, oh, I have these all written down on a sheet that I'll give you this afternoon, or I'll give it to your mom. So when you have a log with a base and you are dividing them, you're going to separate them out into subtraction. So log of any base. Now remember though, they've got to both have the same base. If they don't have the same base, this does not apply. So let's see how they both have base B. And Erin, you were gone yesterday. Tell her what's the, on the calculator, what's the base of our log? 10. 10. So when you're using your calculator, there's a button, um, and you might need that for the ACT. I don't know if it's log. That's a base of 10. So sometimes you'll just have to find some logarithms, and those are always basic. It's not written to the So this is log of B, log base B of M minus log base B of N, and that makes sense because remember when we had something like X to the fifth over X to the fourth, we subtracted our exponents. So that kind of makes sense since logarithms are exponents that we're gonna do that. All right, the third one, oh, I must forget. The third one, and this this one's just kind of basic. Um, log base b of m is equals log base b of n only if m equals n, and that makes sense. So m and n would have to be the same, but they might be written in a different way. For instance, here you might have x squared for m, and you might have 16 for n, but if you have the same bases, then you could write that as your equation, x squared equals 16. So what would x equal then? 4. 4. Um, 4 and 8. All right, so it just means that you can write an equation setting those two quantities equal to each other. And then this next one, number 4, is probably the most useful. Um, one that we're going to use the most. Log base b of m to the k, whatever your exponent is, you can rewrite that, and you can bring the k out of front. And I'm going to prove each of these two, not three, because that's pretty basic. But one, two, and four, I'm just going to show you a little proof as to why those are true. You don't worry, you won't have to write it down. We're not doing proofs. I know you're like, finally, that's out. We did that in geometry. We're not doing that anymore. So the k comes out in front, so we take k times log base b of m. So just to show you what that one might look like, if you had something like, let's see, log um, base 5, um, 8 to the x, or I want to say x to the 8, of x to the 8th, you could rewrite that as 8 times log base 5 of x. So that's just another way that you could write that. And that'll be really helpful in solving, like if you want to know what that x is. You can solve it by bringing the A down in front. So, so now we're going to go through and we're going to prove each of those, okay? But you don't need to write it down unless you want to. They're kind of, it's kind of good to know, but you don't have to know it. I mean, you don't you have to know it, but you don't have to. I'm not like going to test you on this. Okay, so first of all, she must have had enough of logarithms. Once I said prove, she's like, oh, get them back, get them out of here. Okay, so I'm going to write down first log base B of M. 
I'm going to just say that that equals x, because remember, we can always set our logarithms equal to x. And then I'm going to say log base b of n. I'm going to say that it equals y, because I don't. they're not equal to each other necessarily. So remember, how can I write this then? b to the x equals m, right? Remember that? So b to the x equals m. So what would this one be over here? B to the y equals m. Right, and that is what we're going to use to solve these. So we're going to do some substitution. So when I look at the first one, if I take, so I want to get somehow that this equals this. So I'm going to start with m times n. So I'm, I'm proving this first one, number one. I'm proving that I can separate this out into addition. It makes sense because we know we have the exponents, but I want to show you for sure why it is true. Okay, and I'm going to use this always. And I'm going to dual display this so that we can look at this part. Okay, so we're going to look at this blue part right here. All right, so when I do the first one, let's say that I, have M, I take M times N. And what is M equal? B to the X. And what is Y equal? B to the Y. Or excuse me, N equals B to the Y. Okay, and what do I do with X and Y here when my bases are the same? You add them, so it equals B to the X plus Y, right? And then, um, and then I could take the log of this. If I take the log of m in, the other way I can write this is log of b of m in equals x plus y. That's here. I'm just kind of going backwards. Remember when we did that? <coughs> so now I'm going to substitute. What is x equal? So log base b of m n equals, well, x is log base b of m. Whoops. And what's y? Log base b of m. So we just pro proved that, didn't we? Isn't that what we have at number one? So I just did some substituting. Now you can probably see how the same thing will be true when I do the division. So if I have m over n, what's m equal? b to the x. So I have b to the x over, what's n? b to the y. So m over n, how's, what's another way I can write this? b to the, what do I do with x and y? x minus y. Then I can take the log. So the log base b of m over n equals x minus y. What's x? Uh, log, base b. log base b of m and y. Log base b of m. So I'm just proving to you why these properties work. And um, I didn't do the last one. No. Oh, yeah, you might miss your first chart. You could make a mistake. Oh, that's okay. No, I check anyways. You don't? Okay, the last one I want to do, and I'll do it over here. So we can see these is um, if I have m to the k. If I'm going to take it, what is and let's see m equals b to the x. So I have so if I have m equals b to the x, I'm going to take them each to the k power because I'm trying to prove this one now. I'm trying to prove this one. So you can you know you can do anything to each side as long as you to one side as long as you do. So I'm going to take it to k, the k power. And here I'm going to take it to the k power, just because I can do that. And so this is b to the xk. 
Um, and this is m to the k. Then I can take the log, so the log base b of m equals k x or x k. And so I can write this. I can, um, how did I do that? Oh, this is m to the k, I'm sorry. And how did I do it then? Hmm. I'm glad this is super sound very anyway. Well, I'm gonna have to look at that one. Continue. Put put a box there. We're gonna finish that one tomorrow. I'm gonna look at that. That's why I left it blank because I can't put that one out yet. Anyway, it's true, trust me, and I'll prove it to you tomorrow, okay? All right, now we're going to use those today. So um, I'm just going to go through and do some in the, uh, this old book that we had with you. you want, um, yeah, if you, want, you might want to put a couple in your notes. Of course, it's nice. Okay. Oh, I <laughs> my hands are cold and I can't wipe them up in the noise. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not cold in here, though. No, it's not. But I just piled on to my Dr. Pepper while I was oh. driving on my cold steering wheel. <laughs> Do you want my gloves? Life is rough. No, okay. All right. So let's look at an example here. Let's say that I have log. And I'm not going to put a base here. Log mn squared. And let's just separate that out. This is, we say, this is log of m plus log of n squared. That was one of our properties. That's when it's multiplied together. We can divide it out. And then what can I do with this 2? I can put it in front so it equals log m plus 2 log n. So that's just kind of expanding that one. Let's do another one with M and N before we um, try on with some numbers. So if I have the log of the square root of M cubed over N, so let's just simplify what that means. Well, division means I'm going to do what? When you look at your properties, I'm going to subtract. Um, first, I'm going to write this using an exponent. So the log of m cubed over n, what is my exponent going to be there? Instead of making the square root sign, what's my exponent going to be? So I'm taking the square root. Oh, one half. One half. Now remember, what can I do with this exponent? I can put it in front. So I'm going to take one half log m cubed over n. And what can I do with this division part here? Write it as subtraction, right? So log m cubed minus log of n. And there's one more thing I can do with this 3 here. I can take the 3. So I can take 1 half, 3, log m minus log n. Now let's do some one with some numbers in it that you can get down to one answer, okay? So if I'm going to simplify this, log base 2 of 100 minus 2 log base 2 of 5. Now we can go either direction. So when this 2 is in front, it could also be an exponent, either way. So whatever is useful for you. So what I would do is I would write log base 2 of 100 minus log base 2 of 5 squared. And what is 5 squared? 25. So I have log base 2 of 100 minus 
log. Base 2 of 25. What does that subtraction mean when I'm going backwards? What did it mean? Whoa, way up here. Even the back. It means spread this division. So I'm going to write log base 2 of 100 over 25. Well, what's 100 over 25? 4. 4. So I have log base 2 of 4. Well, I can figure that out because remember, we can always set this equal to x. So if I have log base 2 of 4 equals x, that's really 2 to the x equals 4. So what is x? What do I do to 2 to get 4? I square it, so x equals 2. So this simplified is 2. Do you feel like you could do one like that? Maybe, maybe possibly. Wait, so, you can do that last part. When this part right here. Well, remember, when you have the log, what? I mean, just the last. Um, well, I looked right here. Okay, and I knew 2 to the x equals 4. Well, so 2 to what power is this before? Oh, okay. Right? Two That's squared. Going to be the longest time to figure two out. Squared. Okay. So, if this was like, let's say if you got to the end and you got. 4 to the x equals 16. X would be 2 as well. I don't know why, but that's uh, Well, because I'm throwing a lot at you, Josie. That's why. It's okay. All right, let's try one more. Let's do log. Oh, I hate when I do that. Log. Um, base y equals 1 third log base x plus log, or excuse me, not log base x, just log of x, because we're going to say that 10 is our base, okay? Log of x, um, log of 4. Okay, so we're going to kind of work backwards here. I'm going to leave this log base y here for a few minutes, and here, that must be log of y. Yeah, it's log. So this third can be my exponent. So I have log of x to the one third plus log of four. And when this is addition, what can I do with those? Multiply. I'll multiply. So this is really log base x, or log of x, excuse me. 4x, right? 4x to the one-third. So if log base y equals log to the 4x cubed, then y equals 4x cubed. Because they're, or x to the one-third, excuse me. This is y, not base y. Log of y. So, if we have two logs that are equal, didn't we say that up here? That was uh, one of these properties that we wrote down. Number three, if we have two logs that are equal to each other and they are the same base, then these two things are equal. So, if we say that these two are equal, then y equals four. And that's as far as we can go. We can't solve for either one of those. All right, so we're just going to be doing things like that today. I'm going to stop recording now. So we're just going to do some more practice problems.